In this lesson, we're going to talk about the coordinate system that QCAD uses to place entities on the drawing area. I'm going to start a line here, and I'm going to flip down here and notice that this is the absolute Cartesian coordinates, x and y values. This is the absolute polar coordinates, which is a line length with an angle. Down here we have the relative Cartesian coordinates, which is x and y values. And we also have relative polar coordinates, which is a certain dimension at a certain angle. So those are the four types of coordinate systems we use in QCAD. This little red crosshair is down here. That's called the absolute coordinate center of this drawing. So I'm going to move that center over towards the center of the drawing area. And now, if you notice the rulers up here, the XY rulers that go minus 5 plus 5. The Y rulers go minus 10 plus 10. So each dot represents 1 inch, which it says down here, and each line represents a jump of 10 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line here. We're going to click right here, one end of the line, and put the other end of the line right there. Now what we're going to do is break out of this. And notice there's a little yellow circle here. This little yellow circle follows my mouse around. That's the snap circle. That's the nearest thing that it can snap to based on my current mouse position. If I move my mouse to the beginning of this line, that grid snap point, notice down here where it's right now it says minus 20, minus 6. That's because that's where my mouse left the paper left the paper right there. Now it says minus 20, minus 22. When I put the mouse at the end of the line, if you read down, you'll see it says minus 6, comma 6. That means that absolute coordinate of that point is minus 6 on the x dimension, minus 6 inches. It's plus 6 inches on the y dimension, relative to the absolute center of this drawing. Down here, the other end of the line, you notice, look down there, it says plus 7x value, 7 inches, and comma, it's minus 5 inches, which is the y value minus 5. And you can see it's 5 dots below the y center axis, and it's whatever it says, 7 dots to the right of the x axis, center 0. So that is the absolute Cartesian coordinate. We go to the same points, if you look down here now at the absolute polar coordinates, you'll find that that same location has two values. Down here on the left is the XY, down here is the polar coordinate. So you notice the XY value we talked about earlier was minus 6, 6 for the X and Y values. And the polar coordinates are 8.4853 inches at an angle of 135 degrees. So that's the polar version of that dot location. Down here, the end of the line, the snap point at the end of this line, has the XY coordinates of 7 inches, comma, minus 5 inches. And the polar coordinates are 8.6023 inches at an angle of 324.4623 degrees. So what do these angles mean? Well, the angles start out with the zero point. If you notice right now, the angle down here, down here, the angle is zero. So the three o'clock position is zero. Then the, the angle increases as we go around. Here we're at the, nine, at the 12 o'clock position, it's 90 degrees. The nine o'clock position, it's 180 degrees, 270 degrees. And as we approach three o'clock position, it approaches 360 degrees, but never gets there because when you get right to it, it's back to zero. So the, the degrees are indicated in a counterclockwise direction relative to this x axis on the right hand side. So that's what the angle means. The length is simply the distance from the center of origin to wherever the, the snap point is. Right now, the distance 14.1421 inches at a 45 degree angle. So that's the polar coordinate method of identifying the location of either the select circle 
or some entity, some point of some entity that we're using to point to with the select circle. Next thing I want to touch on is this little red circle right here. Notice this little red circle has crosshairs in it. That's called the relative reference point. That's the last place we clicked our mouse. So if I draw another line segment, click here, notice now the relative reference point is there. That's the last place I click my mouse. I click here, that's the new relative reference point. So the relative reference point is like a puppy dog that follows us around. Every time we click something, it leaves this little trail right there. Click something else, it moves to the next place we click. So we're going to use that. That has an extreme high value when we start doing accurate drawing because the relative reference point is going to allow us to reference things from this point and not from the absolute value point. In other words, how far is that from the absolute value? I have no idea. But I do know the end of that line, I can reference things to the end of this line using the relative reference point. And the lower set of numbers we pointed out earlier, when this mouse, when this pointer leaves the black area, that was a minus 17 minus 15. So it's minus 17x comma minus 15y is a distance from that corner of the screen up to the relative reference point. If I exit the screen down here, then it's minus 8 inches comma y minus 22 inches from where I left the screen to the relative reference point. This doesn't give us much information. It's worthless because we don't normally use it to like. What we use it for is to, let's say we want to draw a circle around that relative reference point. Then we can select a tool, and draw a circle, and use the relative reference point to draw it. So we also have the polar coordinates for the relative reference points. The at symbol in front, the ampersand, tells you that's a relative reference value. It's not an absolute reference value. The absence of the at sign, the upper ones, are absolute reference values. So you would spend a lot of time on this subject because this is what, how the CAD program works. Notice over here we have these relative reference tools here. We can modify what we can do with these relative reference marks. They'll become very important later on. So this is just your first introduction to them. So this pretty much concludes the uh, QCAD window coordinate systems. And they're very important. There's nothing more important than the QCAD coordinate systems. So don't be fooled into thinking, well, it's not important. I really don't care about X and Y crap, because you really should. And you're going to find out as we continue, you're going to use them extensively.